a few months ago, I had the incredible opportunity to sit at the feet of none other than Rod Meldrum, soaking in his wisdom about the greatest global flood in history, the baptism of the earth. We delved into the deluge, the truth about how long it takes to form crystals, the truth about it, and the truth about how long it takes to form fossils. My mind was blown. We talked about the young earth, which we both believe. And I know you can have your own theories, but watch. We even talked about how to make your own fossils at home. Rod's insights were nothing short of fascinating, revealing why there's evidence that the earth is a water world rather than a molten ball of lava. Water is holy. Water is life. It makes sense to my spirit. I don't know about you, how you're going to come away from this, but it makes sense to me. Now, I must warn you, Rod can talk forever. The main video is a whopping three hours and 20 minutes long, but don't worry, I've got you covered. I split it up into seven main talking points for easier digestion. So without further ado, enjoy the playlist, The Baptism of a Young Earth. Those crusts are being held in position by two primary forces. The first, you have gravity, which is trying to pull the crust and everything that's the, the, the heavier material to the, towards the center of the Earth. But the Earth is also doing something unique. It's rotating. It's spinning, right? And so as it's spinning, it's kind of like if you have a rock on a string and you swing it around, the rock goes where? To the outside, right? So the heavy stuff is being spun out to the outside but the gravity is trying to pull it to the inside. And those two are in an equilibrium between each other. The crust literally stay in position because gravity is pulling this much force and centrifugal force is pulling this much force the other direction. Okay, so that's what's holding these crusts in, in position. Um, this is why the, the moon actually perturbs. When Jay Heiner and the, they got the GPS satellites um, all, play, all put up, they said, we should be able to define any movement of the Earth's crust up and down within just millimeters, just like the just like uh, Mount Everest. Okay, <laughs> but instead they were all over the board. They said, "What the heck? What's going on?" That's when they that's when they discovered the body tide of the Earth. It turns out that if you have like, for example, let's say that this is the Earth and now this is the Moon right. okay, over here, the Moon is pulling on the Earth, right? And we've all thought that the moon is pulling on the oceans, and that's what causes the, the tides of the earth. It turns out that what's really happening is the moon is actually pulling on the continental crust of the earth. The continental crust of the earth rise and fall, and the water is simply reacting to the moving continents, mm. Mm. which is causing the high and low tides of the earth. Wow. All around the earth which is also for the first time explains why the tides are different at different places on the earth. You know, like the, like the Bay of Fundy in Canada, for example, I mean, that has a, a, the tide every day is like a 20 foot tide, you know, right. but most tides like in California and on the East coast of the United States and so forth are just, you know, a, a few inches of, of tide. So Why most of a discrepancy, most of the land is then not attached to anything beneath. The right. water in fact in fact if you take a look at uh we're the, islands the we're just now, a bunch of islands then no everything is attached oh okay okay on the crust because because when it when it precipitated out of solution there was no place that it didn't precipitate okay right okay gotcha okay but the continental crusts are much thicker than the oceanic crust mm, okay. the oceanic crust average about i think it's six or seven kilometers thick but the continental crust average about 36 kilometers thick. What's really fascinating is that whenever you have mountain ranges that stick up, like a, like the, the the Rocky Mountains or the Himalayas or whatever, okay, or the Alps, if you take a look at this, so this is the mountain sticking up, 
What's fascinating is, is that scientists have now discovered that where you have a mountain sticking up, you have a corresponding root that's pushing it up from underneath. So in other words, where the crust is the highest, it's also the thickest. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's kind of like an iceberg. Think of it, think of this as like an iceberg, and here's the water level, right? Like like, like right here. Okay. So if you get pushed, if it, if more material is gets added underneath here, it's going to push it up out of the water more. And if you take more material up from under here, it'll come down. And vice versa, if you take more material off of the top of it here, the weight is less. And so it actually will float higher in the in just like an iceberg. Okay. So I know it's hard to imagine rocks floating. But that's because of centrifugal force. Just that it, it's hard to imagine if you just have, you know, if I have a big rock here. Right. You think I, it's going to sink. And I, and I let go of it. Right. It's going to go down. Right. Right. Because gravity is overcoming that. But if I take this and put it on a string and, and whip it around my head, it will, it will be, it will seem like it's, it's floating. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. of the, uh, because of the centrifugal force is overcoming the gravitational force. It doesn't completely overcome it just any more than a plane. <laughs> you know, a plane does not defy gravity. Right. It just uses lift and drag and other things and, and, the, and the, the, the shape of the wing to lift the plane up with energy from the jet engines or whatever to, uh, to, to rise above the gravity. But if, but if you turn off the engines, gravity takes back over. <laughs> right, <laughs> okay. right. And you, and you come down.